This is section 1.2, Domain and Range. In this video, we're going to go through number 15 in your book. And this is a problem where it gives us this function and it's asking us to find its domain. So if you remember, the domain of a function is just its input or its x values. So what values can I plug into this function and get a valid answer? Or the way I like to think about it is, are there any x values where if I were to plug them into this function, I wouldn't get a valid answer? So looking at this function that I have, I see that I have a fraction. And if you remember, fractions can never have zero on the denominator because you can never divide by zero. So when I'm thinking about invalid values for x, wherever this denominator equals zero, that would be invalid. So to solve for my domain, I'm going to take this denominator, set it equal to zero, and solve for x. And when I do that, I get x is equal to negative one half. If I were to plug this value into my function, I get some number over zero, can't happen, doesn't work, that means that it's not a valid answer for my function. But that's the only value that would give me an invalid answer for my function. I can plug in anything else that I want, and this function would give me an actual value. So this is the only limit in my uh, domain. So I can write that as <clears throat> my domain are all the values from negative infinity to negative 1 half, union from negative 1 half to positive infinity. So the only value not included is this negative 1 half. The concepts covered in this video are true no matter what pre-cal class you're in, but in case you're interested, all the problems referenced in this book came from this lovely book right here. Remember that if you're a Baylor student, we offer free tutoring on the first floor of Sidrich. You can either make an appointment or drop in whenever you're available to get tutoring in pre-cal, calculus, and a bunch of other subjects as well. Feel free to visit our website for more information.